Welcome to Electro Online. So here we have the gradient in spherical coordinates. We're not going to show you how that's derived, but what we're going to do, which is more practical, given an example, a scalar function in terms of spherical coordinates, try to find the gradient of that. So you can see here that the gradient of a scalar function equals the partial derivative of the function with respect to r in the r direction, plus 1 over r, times the partial derivative of the function with respect to theta in the theta direction plus 1 over r times the sine of theta times the partial derivative, derivative of the function with respect to phi in the phi direction. So essentially, we're finding a vector in the direction of the largest change of that function, and that's called the gradient of the function. So here we have an example where we defined that the function is r times the cosine of theta plus sine theta cosine phi. So let's find the gradient of that. So that means that the gradient of f is equal to the partial derivative of the function with respect to r. So r is the variable that makes this the constant, so this simply becomes the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta cosine of phi and the whole thing in the r direction. So that's the first direction. Now plus 1 over r times the partial derivative of the function with respect to theta. So no, now you can see that we have two terms. Here we have r times the cosine of theta, so when we take the derivative of that, this is the constant, we have the cosine of theta, and of course the derivative of cosine is the negative sine, so that becomes minus r times the sine of theta. And then we have r times the sine of theta cosine phi. So r and cosine of phi are the constants, sine of theta is the variable, the derivative of sine is a cosine. So here we have plus r times the cosine of theta sine of phi. And that will be, that will be in the theta direction. Okay, now we have one left. So here we have 1 over r times the sine of theta times the partial derivative of the function with respect to phi. Notice that r times the cosine of theta is just a constant in terms of phi, so that drops out. So now we, do, now we take the derivative of r times this. Cosine of phi is the variable, the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine, so it gives us the negative r times the sine of theta sine of phi, and that would then be in the phi direction, phi in a vector. All right, now we'll put a plus in here because we're adding that as a third term. Now, of course, we're trying to simplify this as much as possible. So the gradient of f is equal to, here nothing changes, so that simply becomes the cosine of theta plus the sine of theta cosine phi, our unit vector. Now here notice that the r cancels out this r and that r, so this becomes plus the minus sine of theta plus the cosine theta cosine, oh, that's not a cosine, that's a sine. Let me get rid of that. There we go, so cosine theta sine of phi, that's theta unit vector, and then here notice that the r's cancel out and the sine of theta cancel out, the minus becomes, uh, well, this becomes a minus then, so we have minus. So this cancels out with that, that cancels out with that. We're left with a sine of phi, sine of phi times a phi unit vector. And so that is then the answer for the gradient of f. Notice you get a vector quantity. It's a vector that points in the, into the direction of the largest change of that function at a particular point. All you have to do is plug in a certain theta and certain phi. And then, of course, that also the magnitude of it, of course, is the magnitude of that vector. And that is how it's done. Okay.